So I keep saying that ions are moving um, in and out of the cells here, that these ions are, are moving from the inside to the outside of cells or vice versa. So first of all, what is an ion channel? Because they have to be moving somehow, and the way that they're moving is through channels. So what, what is an ion channel? Well, in ion, ion channels are pore forming proteins that help establish and maintain a small voltage gradient across a membrane. So there's small pore forming proteins that help establish a voltage gradient across the membrane. And this allows the membrane to be selective about what molecules can enter the cell and what molecules are excluded from the cell. So basically what the ion channel does is it allows certain things to enter and it allows other things and it prevents other things from entering. Um, so it allows some level of control over what the contents what, what the contents of the cell is. So they're pore forming proteins and, and that's important, they're proteins, okay? Um, and there, there's not just one simple ion channel, there's actually there's actually many different types of ion channels and I, I have four listed here. And these are probably the most important types of ion channels that you might come across. The first one is called the passive or leakage ion channel. And the passive or leakage ion channel allows ions to passively, which means not requiring energy, move across the membrane. So ions can passively move across the membrane without, re without the requirement of energy, usually from ATP. These leakage channels are selective about what ions can pass through. So remember I said before, the ion channel allows for some level of selection. So they can't all just pass right on through freely. You know, there's some level of selection here. And the more ion channels there are, the greater the conductance and the lower the resistance. So more ion channels, greater conductance, lower resistance. And these are located throughout the neuron. So you're going to find these in, in almost every, every part of the neuron. Okay. Then there's something known as a sodium potassium pump. And this is kind of a classic um, ion channel that is talked about quite a bit in a lot of different fields. And the sodium potassium pump are, pumps three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell. So it pumps two, or pumps rather three sodium ions out and two potassium ions in, okay? And the important thing about this is it requires ATP, okay? So in order to accomplish this, it needs energy from the hydrolysis of ATP. So it hydrolyzes those phosphoanhydride bonds and releases free energy to drive this reaction, to drive, the, to drive this pump mechanism. And the three sodium ions bind to the active site. So the way this works is the three sodium ions bind to the active site because remember these are proteins, so they have specific binding sites for, in this case, sodium in, the pro in this membrane-bound protein. And the ATP provides the energy to induce a conformational change in the protein that allows the three sodium ions to be released outside the cell. And, and then following that, the two potassium ions will also bind to specific active sites or specific sites where they, um, specific binding sites on the protein. And the phosphate from the ATP that, that's attached to the, this protein will be released, inducing another conformational change. And this next conformational change will allow the two potassium ions to be released inside the cell. So it's really just a matter of a lot of the stuff we've already talked about in previous videos in the biochemistry lectures about um, you know the, the conformational changes that occur when molecules or ions bind to proteins and, and how that affects the way these proteins function. So the next one I have here is called voltage gated channels and a voltage gated ion channel will open in response to changes in membrane potential. So if there's a so these channels are located in the axon and the axon terminal and the way it works is the channel is initially closed until a sufficient change in membrane potential induces a conformational change. So again, a sufficient change in membrane potential crosses the membrane, um, induces a conformational change in this channel, this protein, opening it and allowing the ions to flow in and out. And that, you know, it, it all comes back to the same things we've talked about with proteins. The next one is ligand gated ion channels and that ligands are just small molecules. Um, so a ligand gated ion channel opens in response to binding of a specific molecule or ligand uh, to a receptor allowing the channel to open. So this molecule binds to a receptor which then induces a conformational change in the channel. 
And uh, these channels are found in the input regions of the neurons, so dendrites and soma. The soma is known, also known as a cell body. And um, once the ligand binds, the protein will change its conformation, allowing ions to move in and out. Okay? So pretty much the same concept as the voltage-gated ion channel, um, only, slightly, only in this case we're, we're talking about a, a specific small molecule binding to a receptor as opposed to a change in membrane potential. So those are the four main types of ion channels and what an ion channel is.